Good afternoon, everyone. Today, our parish community gathers to celebrate Eucharist on this, the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. My brothers and sisters, St. John in his gospel reminds us that God so loved the world that he gave us his only Son. The Holy Spirit gathers us together on this Trinity Sunday to celebrate God's gift of everlasting peace. With Moses, together we proclaim God as merciful, slow to anger, rich in loving kindness. One God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We stand in awe of this sacred mystery, and we lift our hearts and our voices in prayer. We worship as one body in Christ, and so I extend a warm welcome to all who are gathered here today, especially any visitors, as well as those who may be joining us via the live stream today. As always, our time together is sacred, so I ask you to take a moment right now to make sure to silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. And thank you. And now an important reminder for the weeks ahead. We have plans for a stellar Vacation Bible School experience later this summer. Vacation Bible School is going to take place Monday, July 31st through Thursday, August the 3rd here at our St. Mary location. We're going to try something a little different for Vacation Bible School this year and have it meet in the early evening. And so we'll gather for dinner at 5.30 with Vacation Bible School happening right after that. More details about our Stellar Vacation Bible School will be in the bulletin and the weeks ahead. And I invite everyone to keep their ears and hearts open for opportunities to volunteer and to become involved as together we learn about the greatness of God in Vacation Bible School. And now, let us stand and share Christ's welcome with one another. <clears throat> Please join singing our opening song, Holy, Holy, Holy.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. My brothers and sisters, in the first reading, Moses asks the Lord God to pardon the people and to receive them as God's own. Today, we do the same as we call to mind our sin and we ask for the gift of God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you reveal to us the love of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send us forth to make disciples of all the nations. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you breathe upon your church the spirit of adoption. Lord, have have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And for this great gift of the Lord's mercy and forgiveness, Together now, we join to give glory to God. Glory, glory, glory Glory to to God God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of Let us pray.
Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up on Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Second reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, and all the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord.
My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. May the Lord's words be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, welcome to June. Welcome to the heat of an early arrived summer, and welcome to the church's season of ordinary time. And we know this because of the green. Weekdays right now would be in green, but today, this Sunday, and next Sunday, I'll be in white because these are solemnities. We have the solemnity today of the most blessed trinity, and then the solemnity next week of the most holy body and blood of Christ. These are what the church calls theme feasts. They encourage us to meditate deeply on a powerful theological reality. Today, God, three persons, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we hear the readings today, they offer a really interesting approach for us to think about the power and the beauty of the Trinity about the power and the beauty of God as God. Go right to that very first reading from the book of Exodus. What's going on there? Well, Moses has already gone up the mountain once and received the two stone tablets with the Ten Commandments on them, and he comes down the mountain for the first time, and what does he find? The people have gone mad. They have lost their minds. They're worshiping a golden calf. They're prancing around, worshiping something other than God. They are engaged full blast in idolatry. And what does Moses do? Boom! Smashes the tablets. And then what does he do next? He stomps right back up the mountain. I must go talk to God about this. And there he has a powerful encounter with God. Now, Moses is expecting God to say, you know what, Moses, I think you're right. I will come down off this mountain and I will just smash these pesky Israelites for you, all right? But notice what God does not say. God does not say, I will follow you down the mountain, Moses, and and smash these pesky Israelites. He says, no, behold, I am the Lord, the God of gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and kindness. I am the Lord of gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and kindness. Imagine how that changes Moses' outlook as he goes back down the mountain now with two new inscribed tablets that have the commandments on them, recognizing now how God chooses to approach these human beings that he has created as a God of gentleness, mercy, 
forgiveness and kindness. Not as some kind of destroying, vengeful God, but as a God of gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and kindness. You're going to hear me repeat that phrase several times during the course of this homily, and I'm doing that on purpose because these are words and qualities that we're called to live as well. How do we know that? Go right to the second reading. St. Paul speaking to his friends in Corinth. Now, you know, we have in our world that saying that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. In that day and age, the saying would have been what happens in Corinth stays in Corinth. It was a big, bustling, busy ugh, kind of city. Corinth was a seaport. It was one of the busiest seaports in the world at that time. And it meant that, well, as Father Charlie Irvin used to say about Ann Arbor, it had everything and had it intensely. It was a crossing point for so many people, people of different cultures, people of different beliefs. It was a seaport filled with sailors. Need I say more? It was a curious place. What happens in Corinth stays in Corinth. But it is in Corinth that God has called St. Paul to found a little Christian community. That little Christian community is distinctive. It stands out. It is different than the culture that's bubbling and brewing around it. And what marks this culture as different? Gentleness, forgiveness, mercy, and kindness. Gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and kindness. These are distinctive qualities of Christians because these are the distinctive qualities of God. These are distinctive qualities of how the Christian community lives in the midst of the bubbling turmoil of the city of Corinth. And people notice. And a lot of people are changed because there's a small group of people who live as witnesses of gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and kindness. St. Paul is writing to them saying, please keep living in these ways. St. Paul recognizes from his own ministry that people will see, people will notice, some will scoff, ha, 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 look at those silly Christians, but others won't. They'll be intrigued because the Christians are acting completely different than the culture in which they are living. A culture that's all about self-satisfaction, about meeting every possible need one could think of and meeting it intensely. And that is not how these people are living. That is, in fact, not how we are called to live. Gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, kindness is the hallmark of who they are in this growing little community of Christians in Corinth, that busy, bustling seaport. And what happens in Corinth no longer stays in Corinth as the Christian community grows, it expands. Because what happens is the people who travel to Corinth travel away from Corinth, and they take the Christian message with them to all of the places it's possible to go. This is why God calls St. Paul to found a Christian community in a place like Corinth, because it's the perfect switchboard where a message can be heard, shared, lived, and spread. And what is true for them is true for us. We live as Christians in a world that looks askance at us. Just look at the statistics. 
more non-believers than believers now. More skeptics about mainline religion and faith than followers. There's been a shift in our culture and in our world. How could we possibly change that? Gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and kindness. What do we see happening in our world even now? Pick the polar opposites of those. And that's what we see. It's what we hear. It's what we're being told by social media. Now we could throw our hands up in frustration and say, oh, it's hopeless. But that's not the point of this particular feast. The point of this particular feast is that it is filled with hope. If we can emulate the God in whose image we have been created, God himself who tells us that he is gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and compassion. Emulating the Son who was sent into the world to live agape, self-giving love. Did the world look askance at Jesus? Yeah, I think so. Was the world sometimes not ready to hear what Jesus had to say? Yeah, think so. And what happened because of that? Eh, that. That's what's possible, though, when we choose to live gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and compassion. Not that we'll be nailed to the cross as Jesus is, but that will be a part of the life that flows from that. And it's that life that brings us here today. It's the life of the blessed Trinity. It's the life of the God in whose image and likeness we have been made. It's the mark by which we mark ourselves, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May the Lord's words be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. What does that mean? It means we must image into the world this God, this Trinity. And what are the qualities of God we're called to image in the world? You should be able to say them with me now. Gentleness, mercy, forgiveness, and kindness. What if we did that? What if we did that? changed Corinth, changed those people. The image of all of that changed Moses and his approach to his people. The living image of that in Jesus Christ changed the world. Could it not change us and our world? Together now, let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he comes down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's Holy Spirit prompts us this day to pray to our Father with confidence. And so now we stand before God and we offer our prayers on behalf of all those who are most in need. And so in peace we pray, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, drawn from all nations and languages, may the Holy Spirit be our guide as we proclaim the goodness and love of God to all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in civil power and authority, may the Lord guide their leadership as they strive to bring peace to the world and justice for those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are enduring trials and challenges in life, may God in his, in his compassionate mercy remove all burdens and grant them relief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students and teachers, may they be refreshed and renewed as the school year comes to an end. May they know safety during the summer break. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women of Greater Charlotte and Bellevue community who offer their lives for the sake of our safety and protection, may they know safety and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the physically, mentally, and emotionally challenged, all those who are burdened by sickness, and all those who care for them, may they have experience of life of Christ within them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Eric Flancher, Edward Bogus, Frank Kane, and the deceased members of the Papernak and Scripp families, all our beloved dead, and those who went to their graves believing in Christ's resurrection. May they take their place at the eternal feast in the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayers of all gathered here and the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions may be united to those of our patrons, St. Mary and St. Anne, and all the saints who stand before the throne of the Lamb. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, worker of signs and wonders, be our help and our shield. Strengthen us to live as your disciples. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join singing our presentation song, Lord of All Hopefulness. Love in our hearts. 
hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm, be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. And so pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Together now we pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words of our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please join singing our communion song without seeing you.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you make your way from church this evening, as always, Miss Let's go home with you. Offertory gifts can be placed in any of the three white metal drop boxes located around the church. And thanks for your continued generosity in uh, meeting the financial needs of our parish community. And thanks for your very generous response to this year's DSA. I was looking at the statistics yesterday, and we are now 25% over goal. So we're at about 48, almost $50,000, I think, for uh, pledges and gifts to DSA. So thank you very much for that very generous response. In the year ahead, we're going to be focusing more intently on the gift and the mystery of the Eucharist. As a way of assisting in that, join Bishop Boyer on the road to Emmaus, a weekly opportunity to grow in knowledge and love for the Eucharist. More information about the road to Emmaus can be found in the bulletin. We're in the process of updating the software that manages the parish database of names and addresses and other vital contact and other information that we have for everyone in the parish. And we want to make sure that that information is as up-to-date as it possibly can be and that it's accurate as well, including information about reception of sacraments. And so we need your help. You may recall the last couple weekends that there were registration forms, basically, contained in all the bulletins. We really need everyone to fill those out as completely as possible and to return them to the parish office so that we can update all of our contact information. Or you can go online and complete that form at the parish website. Uh, thanks, then, for helping us to keep our parish census as up-to-date as possible, which in turn helps us to be able to assist you more effectively. Our discussion group for The Chosen will continue this week. We'll meet this Thursday, June the 8th at 7 o'clock in the side rooms of the Parish Hall here at St. Mary. And we'll watch and we'll discuss episode 6 of season 1. And as the saying goes, here in Michigan we have two seasons, winter and road construction. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply to this Mass, but I know that we've got people here at this Mass who might be at other Masses during the course of any weekend. And so it's an interesting challenge to get from Charlotte down to Bellevue and back because of the detour um, with those southbound lanes of I-69 being torn out. So for everyone, please be patient, especially if you happen to attend St. Anne at the 930 Mass or here at St. Mary for the 1115 as I make my way there and back. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join singing our closing song, O God Almighty Father. Father.